What are the legal benefits of using a security token over some traditional financial instruments? The legal benefit isn't necessarily that strong right now. I think it's more of a business benefit and a hope of, of the future. Right now, tokenization is relatively new. As with all new things, if you're the front runner, it costs a little bit more. You get a little bit more uncertainty. But if you pull it off, you get a couple possible advantages, right? One is if you're early enough, you might make some legal mistakes, but the regulators might forgive you, right? You've seen this happen with Ethereum. You see this happen with DAO, where the regulators basically thought that they broke the law, but they looked the other way and said, okay, you know, we're not going to do that. Uh, we're not going to enforce against that. But the people that come on later, of course, you know, are not going to get that same benefit where they got to test the waters and make some few mistakes, right? So that's one clear benefit of being an early adopter. Another clear benefit of being an early adopter is that you really can establish a name and reputation for yourself so that when this uh, product goes mainstream, maybe you're already a little bit further ahead of everybody else. Other than that, honestly, you know, generally, the pain of being an early adopter is quite large and severe, as, as you guys know as well. The business promise would be that if you can tokenize, you might be able to run your deals more efficiently. If you tokenize, there's easy and readily available technology that helps facilitate li uh, liquidity. And we also have a market where there's uh, many people globally who have been used to trading tokens already, right, of some sort. So you know, they are more familiar with that technology and that technology can be taught to other people. Compare that with just regular digital securities, which don't necessarily trade, even though they, they are tradable, you just don't have a base of investors in the secondary market trading that. How would you describe the benefits of blockchain technology, how it can be used, like to those who can who never ever dealt with it before? And what are like the real benefits as of now? Let's take a practical case. Um, I'm an owner of real estate and I want to sell that real estate to another person. In reality, what happens now is I have a very long contract with a bank to give me money and get, get a loan. I have a very long contract with the uh, owner of the property that I want to buy, for example. I have four, five, six documents that I need to exchange with the, um, with the land plot registry of the city, with the tax department, with the um, various other governmental and municipality bodies that take care of this. And when I want to transfer something, I have to go to a notary. The notary reads all of this. And then after where everything's fine, we sign. This is very expensive. Um, now in Germany, the transactions cost when you buy, when you buy a property around 2%. So let's say you have a, our 20 million property, which, which we has, uh, have as a, as a pilot, 2% of that. I mean, that's, you know, that's a lot of money. That's 200,000 euros just gone in transaction costs. And the concept of Bitcoin was transferring money without a bank. Security tokens bring you to the next level. Transferring securities like a property without all the stuff in the, in the middle. That's the future. That's the long-term vision that you give me my wallet. I send, I send the ownership of the security tokens to you and you immediately have our owner of this asset. Now, this is the long-term future, we're not there yet, um, but I think that's, that's where we should work to because it takes out, there's so many unnecessary middlemen that are just, with modern technology, can just be overcome. The incentives are that all the people who are supposedly representing shareholders, none of them represent shareholders, and the shareholders are relying on a ledger that they don't trust. So if you look at the whole ecosystem, it's a corrupt ecosystem. For me, you know, the interesting aspects of tokenization and, and, and a distributed ledger 
is that we should try and move everything we do onto distributed ledgers, because that way we have a lot more information, we have a lot more transparency, and then you can ignore everything anyone ever says, and because then words become irrelevant. That's what trustless means. Trustless means is, I don't need to have a conversation with you. I don't need to believe you. I don't need to trust you. I just know that you have no capacity to cheat because nothing that comes out of your mouth is relevant because everything is on the ledger and the ledger speaks for itself. So that changes incentives. So the whole concept of what should happen is that incentives should be changed. A lot of benefits of um, the security tokens about of asset tokenization are being discussed right now, like global liquidity pool, and then there is um, opportunity to access um, to transfer the funds anywhere across the globe. But uh, right now, they remain only potential benefits. So when do you think we will see them coming to life, actually, and if this happen uh, anyway at all? I agree with you. I think there's, there's, only, there's three main benefits for the tokenization of any asset in my mind. And one of those is secondary market liquidity. Uh, the other one would be transferability, instantaneous transferability of ownership. And the other one is negotiability across borders. So unfortunately, right now, none of those are possible, like you said. Um, the, the market liquidity will kind of work itself out. Why? Because obviously many market players now are, are going, uh, looking to, uh, to uh, apply for and receive MTF licenses in Europe, which multilateral trading facility, which basically allows you to trade uh, unregistered securities. So those licenses have been around for decades. Uh, before, the, the last time they were really utilized was during the junk bond market. So late 80s, early 90s. Uh, since then, there really hasn't been any unregulated securities that anybody really felt like trading. Uh, until crypto came along. So ATS licensing in the US as well, similar, similar structure um, as far as the MTF licensing goes. But again, they've been around for quite some time, but many, many market players are now looking to acquire those licenses. So eventually there will be a secondary market. The question is, is how big that secondary market will be. Uh, obviously it has the potential to be much larger than the current market cap of crypto assets in general, but will it? Uh, so that's a question. And there's many things that need to be uh, created in order for that to work, like CSDs, custody solutions, uh, just to name one, uh, but, uh, but there's many more that need to happen. But the other things I think people aren't really focusing on, and that's a problem. In your opinion, are there any benefits of uh, tokenized securities at this moment for investors? or they are only potential? So we say uh, there's the first real benefit today is there is a $130 billion crypto channel that can be utilized towards funding a project that hasn't been marketed to in what I would consider to be a, uh, an institutional manner, meaning the paperwork is up to snuff, what you're gonna own is there. Instead, it's been kind of one-off little deals that might not have been able to get done in an institutional manner, you know what I mean? So you don't really own the equity of the building or you don't really own, you don't have a senior mortgage, but you're kind of some mezzanine piece that may or may not have rights in a bankruptcy court. But these are fully structured assets that you can go there and we're seeking additional distribution. And because of that additional distribution, if we can get buyers from the crypto community, and this is the question, right? Will the crypto community jump in and begin to fund these? Because the adoption of crypto as a global currency, in fact, depends on the fact, not that people use it to buy, but that people use it to build, right? People use it as a form of infrastructure. <laughs> What do you think is the most valuable contribution of security tokens to the blockchain industry on the whole? I think the access to the common man, that's something that is very important because most securities are only accessible by the top 1-2% of the people. Right? So imagine if you wanted to buy Facebook stock before it came to the market. You have no chance, no access to it. But in today's environment with the securitization uh, enabler, any project that is good, that has a chance of being uh, the next unicorn, can market to the whole world. 
and that's what you see happening right now in the ICO space and increasingly the STO space as well. So when that happens, the common person who is an accredited investor or able to fulfill the requirements of the offering will be able to participate. So access is very important and that I think is the biggest uh, enabler in this economy. So we are increasingly seeing the millennials, the Gen Ys having an inclusive kind of uh, mindset and decentralization is another mindset and these things are going to come into the financial space as well and with financial inclusion yes there might be chances of scams you might lose your money but at least you have a chance right and if you are open in terms of uh, accepting risk and you want to participate then you know let the buyer beware you have taken your assessment you go in maybe you become a millionaire maybe you lose the money but at least you have the chance before that you have no chance What is the main benefits of tokenizing equity or debt, in your opinion? I think the, the whole goal is to have more liquidity. So if you have private equity, it's really hard to trade your shares with anyone. And for investors in that early stage venture, it's really hard for them to liquidate their positions if they want to leave that venture. There's only really two ways to get out, which is either through acquisition by a larger firm or by going to an IPO. So I think that by allowing investors to trade their early stage investments, then they can uh, leave their position when they want. They're not locked in. And I think that that's gonna encourage more investors to get involved in the first place because they know they, can, they have the liquidity, they have the ability to get out. Unfortunately, right now, there's not really an active exchange where people can trade these pre, uh, pre um, IPO private equity tokens, but I think that in the future, once that's released, people will be able to, to trade and I think that that's, yeah, that's going to encourage more investment early on.